Oh man, that's... No, I was not dealing with that, brother. No way. Oh, jeez. What's going on there? What is the best radio in FPV? Or what should you buy? Or what should you spend your money on? That's what we're going to look at today. G'day. My name is Stu from UAV Futures. This is the Jumper T14, a new radio I've been testing out for a little while. And we're going to find out, should you upgrade to this? Do you want to purchase this? How does it go compared to the Pocket? And whether you're a new time person coming into the hobby or possibly you're looking for an upgrade, this is the video you need to see. We're also going to take this out and compare it directly to its biggest threat, which would be the jumper boxer and a big shout out to stickman steve who's later in the video because he actually has that radio he's going to be comparing apples with apples and i'll be comparing it to some oranges and we can show you exactly is this the radio you want to get what does it do right or what could we change and should you really spend your cash on it so well uh, let's get started as a bit of an overview it says it is a tailor made for f PV. Now look, that's a pretty nice statement. Chump has been around for a little while and I've got to say they have been hit and miss. So a bit of a history. They've had some ter terrible quality control. Although as of late, I haven't had any issues uh, probably within the last 12 months or something. I still like my, uh, let me get it, T20. I quite like the shape of this radio, although it is very, very similar uh, to their T14. However, my favorite radio is this bad boy right here. And you can also watch this video. This is the Radio Master Pocket. And believe it or not, that's like the cheapest one there is. However, that doesn't mean that this is a better radio. I just like some of the features more uh, than this one, but let's get into it. The big one for this, uh, not only is it tailor-made for FPV, it is saying it has some CNC gimbals um, and also it is offering one watt of power. So if any of you long range people out there or you're worried about getting some fail safes, this on ELRS definitely should have you covered. If you're getting some dropouts after that, well, chances are you're doing something else wrong and it's not related to the radio. Of course, it's rocking Edge TX. Uh, so let's go through quickly some of the switches, I should say, as a mid-size radio. It fits nicely in your hand, whether you are a pincher or whether you're a thumbing pilot uh, like myself. And that's where it's going to be imperative to Steve as well, because he is also, I guess, a hybrid or a claw pincher. I don't know what you call his style of flying, but he's going to be holding it a little different, little bit differently. So stay tuned for uh, his impressions as well. If we flip it over, I should say, it takes some 18650s or some of the newer style batteries as well, which are a little bit larger. And uh, although that is kind of wedged in there, that whole thing does come out and you can slot in your size batteries as well. So I do really like the battery that it came with. However, a bit of a, uh, this is like a Coke from a Pepsi glass, bit of reference. I've got a jumper radio using some Radio Master batteries. It would be nice if some batteries came with it, uh, but that's not the case with this one. Uh, the gimbals, when I had a look at these, and I've seen some other videos as well, so shout out to Ian for his uh, thoughts on this, and he's exactly correct. The parts that are metal, and I couldn't sum it up any better, the parts that are CNC'd are like the flashy show parts, and the parts that you want to be cnc that you need to be fairly sturdy, uh, those parts are made of plastic. So even though they are CNC gimbals in here, they're not as nice as some of the more expensive ones um, out there as well. So I guess that's... Uh, Technically telling the truth, but it's not, I don't feel like these gimbals are any serious upgrade or anything like that. But as a bit of an overview, it fits in the hand nicely. We have a, I don't like this, uh, this we have a little momentary switch right here, which kind of really pisses me off because if you've been watching my channel for a long time and you're not a complete nutcase, everybody knows that your arm switch uh, needs to go on the right hand side. Uh, well, hang on, hang on. This is Stu from the future and I 100% apologize. Turns out I am the freak here because I put this poll up and actually 76% of you crazy lizard people out there do put your arm switch on the left, which is insane to me. And the other crazy part here, check this out. Did you know that 76% of my audience is actually not subscribed? That's some crazy meant to be correlation so as well as fixing your arm switch make sure you are subscribed and hit that button because it really does help the channel anyway back for you lizard people let's get on with the video and you have the left hand side for your throttle you can find about it in the comments which side is your arm switch on um this side this is great this is like a uh a little latching switch that sort of holds here but this momentary it only stays down while your button is on it so for me trying to find the arm switch unlike this I can press it and it stays pressed in. This one I don't really like. You do get the option to swap that out to some more traditional switches, like some more of these which come uh, in the box. However, I really want this switch. It feels nice, it's a good size. I just wanna switch it for this one. I wish I could swap those two around, but there is no way to do that in its current state. You've got some two position, three position, three position, two position, um, couple little trims, and then a fairly standard uh, inside right here with your uh, buttons down the side. 
I do want to give a shout out to the OLED screen. It is a really bright screen. Not that you look at it so much when you're flying around and you've got your visor on or your goggles or anything like that. Compared to say the pocket, when I turn this on, it has a much smaller screen and it is uh, much more difficult to read the pocket. However, once you've got those on, it doesn't really make a difference. So let's do it. This is the part you need to see though. We're gonna get out of the field, we're gonna fly it around. I'm pretty sure Steve's gonna break some stuff. We do have some issues with the radio, which we solve in the field uh, with some quick thinking. And then we're just gonna straight up ask the question to Steve and myself and say, would you buy this radio? Like you started tomorrow, are you gonna drop your 100 bucks or whatever on this radio? Is this the one that you're gonna buy? Because that's the information that you need to know. So I've got the Jumper T14 in my hand, about to take it for a rip, and we've got Steve in the background, who's, you know, still struggling to fly. We're putting it through its paces, and it'll be pretty interesting because it is a very similar shape uh, to the Boxer, which is what he flies around all the time. So give you my impressions, his impressions, and possibly lose one of the drones uh, in the water behind us as well. Right, now before we get started, I should say one of my all-time favorite radios, the uh, Radio Master Pocket, is my go-to, but this one is a very similar similar sort of form factor. This is a little bit smaller and it's so easy to transport, which is what I like. But this bad boy, uh, it's, I'm not gonna say more fully featured. It can go up to one watt, which is kind of crazy, but uh, it's not as big as some of the T16s or anything like that. It's gonna be good for pinches, which will be interesting to see what Steve thinks behind the camera, because he pinches all the time on his boxer. And like I mentioned, look at this. For a uh, similarity size-wise between the two, uh, you can't get, like, they're almost identical yeah, in terms yeah. of shape. So, but let's do it. Feels okay in the hand. Turn this bad boy on. And one thing I do want to say is it always takes a bit longer. I don't know why to turn this radio on. It feels like it takes another two seconds. I don't know if that's my ADHD brain, but it's like, come on, let's go get flying. But let's do it. Flick my switches, plug this in. And see, look at that. That's where I want to put That's my where arm you have switch. Your arm switch. And already I'm like pressing a time. I mean, everybody can get, you can get used to different things. So I've had to put it on this switch. There you go. Cool. Oh, geez. What's going on there? <laughs> I think my channels need to be reversed. No way, no way. All right, let me, uh, where's this drone? Stay. Stay tuned. I think as I'm yawing right, I'm getting like it's registering as left. I see your AETR's all messed up. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure I checked that in beta flight. All right, I could have done this the hard way or the easy way, and we kind of did it the hard way on the radio, which I do not recommend because then it'll be annoying for all the other models. I've got to do this going forward. However, for the sake of this review, all I did was muck around with my aliens and rudder and those sorts of things, and I changed the mapping in here to correspond with the sticks that sends the signal to the drone. So we're good to go. It was the round way. This is like take five now. Let's do it. <laughs> Rip around and find out how the T14 actually goes. Fingers crossed as well. Uh, looking good. You all clear, Steve? Yeah, mate. All right. The air unit was getting very, very warm. So let's just do a little bit. The sticks feel very, uh, like, loose, if that makes sense. I, I usually think I'm a pretty loose pilot, but off the bat, uh, the default sticks, probably I would want a lot more tension on these. And go for just a gentle cruise. A lot of them come with different spring yeah, tensions. Yeah, they and stuff do. They hit, look, it does come with some other parts. You can adjust all those sorts of things. I'm getting a bit of video breakup as well for some reason. I wonder if that's because we've been letting it idle for like a hundred years as we've been trying to work these things out. How far? Very muddy up here. How far do I want to go? Oh man! Please, no breakups. So I'm out over the farmer's field right now. I'm a long way away. Not getting any, uh, my link quality is still perfect, but it's my video, which is kind of scaring me. Oh, got some birds. I'm, I don't want to hit them. Don't want to go near them. Do I dare go over the water? I mean, are we going to go swimming here? I'm not. And there's a, that water is very green and murky, gross. full of algae. A little bit of break up right there. All right, more radio talk. Uh, I still prefer that small pocket size, but I think that's just because I'm used to it. It does need a little bit of tensioning uh, for, I would say for most pilots. This is kind of almost as loose as you can get it. Um, but other than that, it fits in the hand quite nicely. I would say for like 
my daughter, this radio would be too big. Um, you know, that's where the pocket is also suited. But for most adult hands, this is probably a very default size. A lot of people are going to be able to use this and enjoy this. Oh, here we go, Chris. Now, I am getting a bit more confidence with it. I have no problems with the radio at all. It's really just the, the video that I don't want to be dropping out up here. All right. And, of course, uh, you know, it's rocking ELRS. It doesn't have any backpack features or anything like that. So that might be a deal breaker for some HD Zero users although i do believe you can sort of it's got a uart inside here that you can get in and program some stuff and flash some things to it but yeah look straight uh off the bat for a i would say look it's not the most entry radio you've ever had but for a just a i don't even want to say beginner because look the price is kind of beginner like 90 bucks is a, a pretty good day uh, to get in and experience and have a great radio. You're gonna use it a lot. Um, if this is all I could ever fly, would I be upset? Nope, absolutely not. If you're gonna do some extreme long ranges as well, like that one watt, which look, I'm not flying around on, but one watt uh, is gonna get you a lot of distance. But what I should do, let's bring it into Steve, see what he thinks because he's got the Boxer and that will be a good comparative uh, comparison between this one. It's hard to talk and fly, hey? Mm -hmm. All right now, I've also got my arm switch. I need to be careful. I'm just going to stand behind you. Yeah, you stand behind me because when I'm coming into disarm, it's this switch. Notice how well I had that lined up before I even took my hand completely off the uh, off the right stick right there. All right, I'm going to disarm and then I'll be back. Unplug. This guy scares me. What are you whispering in the back? Nothing. <laughs> Alrighty, so look, uh, overall, I liked it. I think for 90 bucks, it's uh, a pretty decent radio. I have no real issues with it. Besides, I do wish I could switch this one out. You do get some extra switches you would have seen at the start of the video, but unfortunately, uh, you can't just simply, there's only, there's no replacements for this switch right here, which I would love that to be on the right-hand side because look, I'm one of those weird people. Let me know, do you put your arm switch on the right side or the left side? Steve likes it left, <laughs> I like it right. <laughs> But yeah, overall, I gotta say, uh, a thumbs up. I kind of like it. Would I use it over my box, my uh, Radio Master pocket? Probably not. Simply because ease of use. I like how small that packs down. It's easy to take anywhere. It does exactly what I want to do. However, if I was doing some longer range or more critical missions or something where I really was flying in a sketchy area and I was worried about getting my drone back, being able to go up to one watt or having that power in there is going to make a world of difference. And I think that is totally worth it for that probably $30 upgrade, the price difference between the two if you care about performance. This is more performance featured, and I would say the Radio Master Pocket is more of a just a, a fun park flying radio, which is my favorite type of flying. All right, let's hand it over to Steve, see what he thinks. The man with the plan and the most beautiful box that we've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, what's your? I, I want to point something out, but I'm not going to do that straight away. What's your thoughts on this? First impressions. You saw it a little bit in my hands it's cruising around. It's identical for size and yep. the way it feels. Like you got your little finger notches here. Yes, I didn't even notice them. No. I wonder if that's because I fly with my thumbs and you're a, you're a pincher. Yeah, well, I hook my middle fingers in there. I actually use this as my this position switch as my arm. Okay. This one I don't use unless it's a beeper. Or Is something. that momentary on that momentary, one as well? Yeah. So it's okay. So they've they've no like they've copied well. the same it's as this one. Okay. Layout. Yes. The pots even. Everything's the same. Yep. And we, but we don't have all these nice little pieces on uh, no, the the T14 switch buttons or whatever they are. Yep. Um, I, th I thought the same thing too when I first picked it up. The gimbals are super loose. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. I like to have a bit of resistance there. Yes. Don't know. It's just me. Apart from that, everything feels good. Scroll wheel feels the same. The thing I like about the, the T14, which I think if we could incorporate into the Boxer, mm -hmm. is the antenna. Okay. Like I know it's an extra little piece, but it folds out the way. I've had a lot of trouble with this. Recently, I was just explaining to you that it desoldered itself and was just spinning freely. Yep. I was getting, you, you were getting heaps of range dropouts and we yeah, were trying to ridiculous. find out if there was something was wrong. And it turns out it was just the antenna. So yep. I've taken it apart, butchered it, soldered it, and it's all good. But that's not going to happen, hopefully, when it comes to... That's right. That. That's right. And I was looking at doing the mod. There's a lot of guys doing a box of mod where they put a Radio Master pocket antenna onto there with a little 3D okay. CPU printed part. Yes, yes. And I was going to do that until I found the issue and fixed it. So. Yep. Yeah. All right. Apart from that, form factor feels almost identical. So I'm keen to see how it actually Okay, feels. let's do it. Let's go for a rip. Okay. I know. Right, off we go. To the races. Be mindful of video, which is not exactly what I'm interested in this review. I yeah, want to hear yeah. about the T14. Nice yeah, those gimbals are so loose. Is that a hindrance to your normal flying style? Um, I'm not going to push your drone, but yeah, it is. Okay. 
You feel, it felt like uncomfortable, a little bit too uncontrollable. That's how it felt to me. Versus some, yeah. Okay, yep. And I, I guess that's, I'm accustomed to the boxer now. I love the fact that that had fairly firm gimbals in it straight away. You can tighten this one out of the, like it yeah, does yeah. come, this is just out of the box. Um, feels almost identical. Like honestly, I could just be holding my boxer right now. Yeah, they feel so loose. That's the first thing I would do. But yeah, look, the radio itself feels exactly the same. Almost same way out. Mm -hmm. But I use the the pocket as well. Like I travel for work, so. Oh, that's right. You got one. Hey, you, yours is a brown one or um, something? That's no, like the it charcoal. Did... Okay. All right. Charcoal. 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 Mr. Ladi da da. Okay, the brown one. Yep. I've got a tip for you. <laughs> okay, all right. Here, bring it in. Bring it in. I want to see your nice, gentle disarm, and then I want to talk a little bit more about the radio. Yeah. I'm going to film. Let's see. Remember where the arm? It's up here. You're, oh, man. That's... No, I was not dealing with that, brother. No way. That was way too close. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, that was it. coming straight oh, yeah, for man. us. It won't even let you finish flying. That's uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, thoughts. It obviously has a bit of a different strap at the back. I yeah. actually think I prefer your one. The I one prefer on the, the box strap. Side. It packs away much more compact. Yes. You're not going to snap it off. Yep. I mean, I don't use it anyway. Yeah, I'm yeah. never going to sit it on yeah. the ground, yeah, but yeah. 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 But honestly, I think if you could take an antenna system like this onto the boxer, I'd take the boxer. Mm -hmm. I honestly would. I just love it. But yeah. Okay. Great, you would you fly with this? What do you think about for ninety bucks? Thumbs up, thumbs down, or in the middle? That's great for ninety bucks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's American. Yeah. Yep. All right. And would you get this as your first radio coming into the hobby? What would you buy if you're going to start tomorrow? What would you buy? Would you use this? It would be something like this or the Radio Master boxer. Okay. Would, just for the form factor for me, I like it. Fairly yep. large hands, I guess, but just the way it sits and holds, I like it. Okay. But in saying that, when I travel, I use the Radio Master Pocket, and I still pinch the pocket. It's fine. Yep. I think uh, I can. Uh, I like that as well. What about the screen here? Do you feel like that's uh, pretty bright in this? It's not really a selling point. No, you I mean, don't honestly, care. When I'm flying, I got goggles. I'm not looking at my screen. Okay. All right. When I'm doing like what we were doing before with the AETR channel mapping. Yes. It was fine. Yep. Yeah. All right. Cool. Too easy. Thanks, Steve. No worries. It has almost identical, same sort of setup, right? So mm -hmm, you flip, mm -hmm, flip mm -hmm. or whatever. Putting that onto the boxer, or this onto the boxer. So that's all you want. You want that radio. Yeah. You prefer that radio? I do, yeah. But you just want that antenna and yeah. then you're done. But if I knew no different and was coming in and saw this, I would, you know, it has the same features. One watt transmission. Yes. That, yes, you can use your backpack features, whatever. I don't know what that is. I don't honestly care. Okay. But in terms of your, your transmit power, the form factor, almost identical. It's exactly what I was after. I okay. didn't want the T16 massive. Yes. All that, like even this stuff. Yep. You don't use it. Yep. You know? I, 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 uh, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. If they said, look, that's all you can fly with, I'd be like, okay. Be no that. dramas. Yeah. Sure. Forever. Done. 100%. All right. Too easy. easy. Thank you. Now, oh, I should say, add this one in here. What about in terms of quality? Because Jumpers had some issues in the past about having bad quality. Did this feel bad quality on the outside? I mean, I've would have looked on the inside in the bench, but on the outside, did it seem lower quality or anything like that no, to your Radio Master? It feels almost identical to the Radio Master in terms of, um, what do you call it, textile okay. feeling. Yep, um, yep. I don't know about the gimbals. Well, they're meant to be CNC gimbal, yeah. but I think the... The parts that are metal and CNC'd are the parts that more for display yeah, and the, the the actual, the yeah, the yeah. good parts you need to be CNC'd yeah. are still plastic. So I feel like that's a bit dirty by a jumper yeah, to do that. Yeah, they don't feel like full CNC'd Yeah, yeah. too easy. All right, thanks, Steve. Cool. So would I buy this radio? And the answer is probably not. Like, it's not my favorite radio. I feel like for the money, I do actually prefer, if we're going to be sticking with the jumper side of things, I prefer like the T20. Um, but for me, I just really can't go past a radio like this, the Pocket. It doesn't have as many watts. Look, it's not quite as big. Maybe if you're a pinching pilot or something like that. But for me and my flying style, this does more than enough. I love that I can just pack this down into such a small form factor. It's so easy to throw in the bag. Not that there really is too much of a difference here, but this just makes it so easy. It's light, it lasts well on the batteries. Uh, look, this is pretty decent as well. I really do like the batteries in here, but this is cheaper. This is my, believe it or not, this is one of the cheapest radios that I fly with. And also, it is my go-to radio. So it's not always about having the most power, the most buttons, the most switches and everything like that. And a big one for me too, uh, I really like my arm switch on the right-hand side and this is a latching switch rather than there's just little momentary right there. So look, your mileage may vary. Maybe you're one of those weirdos who puts their uh, little arm switch on the left-hand side. I mean, I'd, I don't know what kind of psycho uh, would do that. But you also need to go watch this video as well before you make a purchase because this is the pocket review and 